Welcome to a new year with the Grace Lace Podcast. If this is your first time listening in, I'm so glad you're here. I'm Ruth Jo Simons, and together with my co-host, Eve Stipes, we're kicking off the new year with a series that we personally need, and we have a sneaking suspicion you may need as well. On the off chance that you struggle to feel motivated at the beginning of a new year, we're with you, friend. For all of us lacking motivation and struggling with pep in our step and honestly kind of dreading a new year, grab a cup of coffee and join us as we preach truth to ourselves. Oh man, when you said that this is something we need personally, you were not joking, (laughs) right? A new year and oh man, we're just feeling it a little bit. So if you are totally new to the podcast, um, you might need to know a little bit about how Ruth and I both are wired. And it's kind of unfortunate sometimes that we're both wired this way, but we both tend to be a little bit melancholy, maybe is the right Deep word. Deep thinkers. We, you know, kind of yeah. like need to sit in our thoughts for a while. Uh, I mean, we're Feelers. really different personality wise. We're very yes. different, which is why we work together. Yes. But, uh, but when it comes to this topic of lacking motivation, we're on the same page because we... Yeah can get ahead of ourselves, get overwhelmed, feel big feelings at the start Mm -hmm. of the year. And when we looked at each other and said, what do we need at the start of the year? We both were like, (laughs) we need to speak some truth to our lack of motivation. Yes, for sure. And if you have listened to the podcast before, also, you'll know that kind of this idea of preaching truth to ourselves is something that we come back to over and over again. It's something that Ruth has literally written on the blog for like 15 years. Like the idea that we have got to like kind of tell ourselves what to do sometimes when we know what's true, but we struggle to apply it. We have to remind ourselves, right? Tell ourselves, here's what's up. Here's what God's word says. Let's remind ourselves. Well, I'm just sitting here thinking probably our listeners don't recognize Um, or maybe don't don't believe us when we say that we lack motivation, because I think people think Mm -hmm. of me as being like a hustler and I am and working really hard. And I think people are surprised when I say that I'm not a good goal setter, that Mm -hmm. I don't dream big very easily. I'm not that person who comes up with the word of the year. I don't turn (laughs) my calendar and suddenly feel like, um, I've got this motivation to begin a new Bible reading plan or a new exercise plan, or this is an opportunity to start anew. I mean, did you see how much effort it took for me to even like speak with all this optimism and enthusiasm? <laughs> That's just not the You're way I'm wired. You're doing a great job. You're Thank doing you. a great job. I'm trying real hard coming off of a cold a little bit here. And so I'm, I'm really trying to sound really motivated, but the truth is I really struggle with that. And I just... I think I just wanted to come on here and be really honest and say, I see you if you're a listener and you're going, hey, all these people around us are setting goals and they're excited and they have chosen this beautiful word and they've had like this five-part series where they have these shareables and, and, (laughs) um, you know, these workshops and these plans for how to implement their beautiful word and intentions for the year. And maybe you're sitting there feeling like you're behind and that you're already like, I Mm -hmm. can't even keep up with all this enthusiasm. I'm barely dealing with how my year ended. And I just wanted to say, I see you. I think Eve sees you exactly in that spot too. And that we just on the off chance that you're like us, this series is for you. Yeah. And that's not to say there's anything wrong. If you are someone who loves the new year and you are like, can't wait to bust out the new pencils and write something down you go girl like happy for you that is awesome it's just and the truth that we is struggle. we are actually here and and the truth is yeah. we're actually here to jump start a fresh start it's just yes. that the fresh start may be counterintuitive it might be difficult and we're acknowledging the fact that not everybody starts the fresh start with a <laughs> lot of enthusiasm and motivation that we might have to take ourselves you know like literally in hand and shake ourselves and say hey soul just like the psalmist does, right? You know, you need to not be downcast. You need to not completely, you know, um, think this is without hope. You Mm -hmm. need to preach to yourself when you're lacking motivation. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about it. What do you think are some reasons why 
we feel unmotivated sometimes, Eve. I mean, is this super vulnerable here at the start of the new year? <laughs> I feel a little like, could we have chosen a topic that's less revealing about ourselves? Yes, we could have, but um, have. let's just try to, this, this episode is going to kick off all the truths that we're going to talk and preach to ourselves. Yeah. But this particular episode, we're going to just set this conversation right where we're going to say, be honest with why we struggle with this. What mm -hmm. are some reasons why we can feel unmotivated? You go first. Well, it's funny. You and I kind of on a light note, we talk about how winter is just hard for us, right? Like I totally. live in Indiana, yes. the Midwest in the winter is very gray and brown. Like there's just not a lot of sunshine and everything looks yuck. And after a couple of weeks of that, I just struggle to like yeah. feel happy about anything. And you have something a little bit different. It's just really right. Cold. I'm in Colorado where the snow is beautiful. It, but mm -hmm. if you're a winter sport person, which my winter sport is hot tubbing. I mean, <laughs> I do not ski or snowboard and I'm not a snowshoer. So we moved to this part of Colorado where we have a lot of snow for many months. And most yeah. of what I need to do um, requires not snuggling up and sitting at home <laughs> and just staring at the fire. So sometimes winter is really hard for me. And um, and I know that we've got friends all over this country who have versions yeah. of that, whether it be not enough sunshine or, you know, a lot of rain or Mm -hmm. just not being a cold person. We're, we're with <laughs> you on that. So, but, so that's a really good point. And then the other thing, let's just get out of the way is that, um, both of, both you and I have talked a little bit, but we're in different seasons. You're in your thirties. Mm -hmm. I'm in my late forties, yep. but you have young children. I've got, um, you know, the children spread. leaving our home. I mean, this is like totally two different seasons of life, but we both have acknowledged that there have been some strange emotions in the last, you know, a <laughs> couple months, if not last year, we've wrestled with different hormonal changes, yeah. some emotions that we are like, wait, where did that come from? Um, mornings where it's hard to get out of bed. Some days mm -hmm. when we're like, wait, nothing's really wrong, but why am I feeling like I yeah. can't put the, my foot in front of the other? And, yeah. you know, we're not here to try to be like clinical about this. We're not trying to be like doctors or uh, say, this is what going on in everybody's lives. We're just telling our own stories. And I know for me, some of those hormonal changes is like premenopausal. And I know that some <laughs> of my feelings are me working through a different season of life, even if it's not totally hormonal. It's that there are some things that I can't see. I, I, do, I can't see around the bend with yeah. the uncertainties in my life and with some things that feel like are new it's just new territory, right? With grown mm -hmm. children, it might be new territory for you with um, the different things that are on your plate as well. And I think that's valid, right? Some of those things yeah. are truly valid emotions. Yeah. And you never know. I mean, even grief, like we, I think we both have mm -hmm. worked through varying degrees of grief for different situations and circumstances and loss. And so that affects, I think, my motivation for the future sometimes too. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about like a whole, we had a whole season about starting where you are. Like sometimes our lack of motivation is a sinful response. Like it's that we are really discontent, that we are like frustrated that God's not giving us a different circumstance or something new. And so we kind of just like put our feet down and say like, I'm not going to do anything until hmm. X, Y, Z changes. And that's not a great place to be in, but we've all been there, right? Where it's like, ah, I just can't do anything until this circumstance changes. And I think that's why we had a start where you are podcast season, because we want to address the fact that sometimes we need to recognize that our response is one where we're not seeing what God's already given us. We're not yeah. stewarding well because we're only looking at what we don't have. So that season, that entire last season was us addressing how do we look at what God's already given us and be good stewards of that and start where we are. And so I think that's so true. Like sometimes the lack of motivation is a sinful response, you know, from ingratitude or not being able to recognize that the Lord has been gracious and good. And we're going to address a lot of those things. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, as we're talking about here, that sometimes a lack of motivation can really be um, triggered by a season or a set of 
mm-hmm. circumstances and waiting and difficulties in praying through things that we can't fix right now. And all yeah. those things can actually lead us just like those we read about in scripture towards the question of like, is this, is there meaning here? Is this meaningless? Do I have purpose? <laughs> How do I find my purpose? You know, what is my life? Things, yeah, what yeah. is life? Right. <laughs> and there goes Ruth and Eve needing a cup of <laughs> coffee and a long walk. Right. And so we're, we're not going to go down every philosophical question. We're going to actually tackle these by looking at scripture and saying, what is the truth we preach to ourselves to remind ourselves that there is purpose and meaning and that, yeah. um, this life is not just about what we accomplished. These are yeah. the things that we're going to be looking at. Yeah. I think another reason that sometimes we lack motivation, or at least I personally do, is that there's no immediate gratification, right? Like mm-hmm. I want to see action. Like I want to do something and I want there to be a clear result. And I can say, yes, I did this thing and that thing happened. And so that's motivating to me. Like there's a reward at the end of it. Totally. Yes. And so much of life is not that way, right? Like it's The investing. mundane is not yes, rewarding never. all the time. You're a mama to a bunch of little people mm-hmm. and you are not getting a paycheck and having some like, you've got a bonus spa day just because you finished doing all the dishes today. That's not right. the way it works. Like if there could be a potty training bonus, I would take it, but <laughs> there's not. And so right now I'm potty training twins and yeah. there is not immediate gratification. And so to be very honest, some days I lack motivation. I'm like, can we just put a diaper on and be back to like the way it was, right? Like I just don't want to do it. But right. Because That's sometimes our motivation, way. you know, sometimes the, the the thing that motivates us is like a good and wholesome reward, like seeing fruit. Yeah. That's a good, we, we want to see fruit and there's nothing yes. wrong with wanting to see fruit, like in obedience in our children or a clean home that right. shows that we worked really hard and now we get to enjoy a clean home. That's, that fruit is not some kind of ill motivation, right? That's a, That's good. But I think sometimes, you know, it's easy to be motivated by something that makes us feel really good. Like, oh, I, mm-hmm. I have the immediate gratification of um, getting to go shopping or having a vacation or feeling like I have approval of others. And so sometimes my lack of motivation reveals to me what I'm thinking is what I really need as a reward, right? And, yeah. and a lot of times it reveals to me that you know, I even wrote um, Beholding and Becoming, The Art of Everyday Worship, because mm-hmm. the mundane is so boring sometimes, and the mundane can feel so not rewarding. And so it can feel like, wow, I I literally feel like I would be so much more motivated if at the end of this, I get what I want. And yeah. the truth is, there are reasons why we need to find motivation in something other than what pleases us in the immediate. Mm-hmm. I can think yeah. of a, other, a couple of other reasons why I find myself unmotivated sometimes. And let's um, hear it. <laughs> and I, and I just will go first and be really honest and say that this time of year, a lot of times that is um, my, uh, my lack of motivation happens sometimes because I'm spending too much time comparing myself to somebody else. Mm-hmm. It's just so easy to look around and be like, Oh, I already feel like I'm behind. I mean, yeah. I cannot believe that person already is, you know, sticking to a keto diet or already <laughs> working out for 30 minutes every single yeah. day. And why can I not even set a goal like that? Right? Sometimes it can feel like this wrapped up in my sense of shame and my sense of self-condemnation and failure is this idea of comparing and thinking that I need to be further along. Yeah, or I think one that I struggle with too is like just uncertainty, right? Like, Mm. because I don't know how things are going to end or I can't see like how the Lord might work everything out. Yeah. I just don't start. (laughs) Like I just don't pursue or I don't lean into anything. I'm just kind of like, well, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It kind of is tied to that gratification issue, but it's a little bit more than that. Like kind of that big picture, the anxiety that it sometimes creates is just like, no, I don't know. I, I'm, I can't go there. I don't know what to do. I don't know where it's going to lead me. You know, I, I, I'm sure we shared this before because we've had different seasons where we've talked about um, being in the word and stuff, but I just got to say one of the classic things in the Christian life is this idea of starting a, 
new with your a new Bible reading plan or being like, wow, I didn't finish my goals for last year. So let me start over again. And I'll just be honest, there's been multiple years where I've started at Genesis one, right? Like I, yeah. I'm going, this is the year. And I don't know if I can handle fleshing this out in real time here, but I'm going to try. But I sometimes am just um, really convicted that if I knew at the end of the year that I was going to go to an award ceremony in which <laughs> I would be presented with a big crystal like Completion. award that says, you have completed reading your Bible in a year. <laughs> now we're sending you to an all expense paid trip to the Bahamas. Yeah. Eve, I... I think I would get through, I I think I literally, or if I was like presenting a doctoral like thesis on it and I, and I was going to present this thing about what I read and what I understood, I think I'm so motivated by like Hmm. this idea of like, I don't want to let anybody down. I want to achieve this. Um, I'm going to make sure that I, I'm not embarrassed that I don't finish it when really like my lack of motivation is probably sometimes because I don't have something dangling over top saying like, you're going to, you're going to win this award or you're going to be amazing at this. My lack of motivation is because I'm not keeping my eye on why I should be motivated in the first place. And right. it's so like a wrong goal I, to start in, with. Yeah. In this, in this particular topic of like being in the word, I really realized that when I confront what is going on in my heart, so often it's because I kind of forgot why mm. I need to be motivated or what <laughs> should, you know, drive yeah. that motivation in the first place. And I think that's some of what we're going to preach to ourselves in the coming weeks. Yeah. We'll kind of uncover a little bit of where our hearts are, like what attitude is maybe mm-hmm. stirring and then what truth we can specifically like rehearse and meditate on and think about to fight that temptation. I do want to say though, that in this topic, that we want to also be really honoring to the fact that some of us are just exhausted and that exhaustion does not go away just because the calendar turned to January one and there's Mm -hmm. a reset button. The culturally, we all say there's a reset, but the truth is you may be walking through a loss and you know, I, I, Eve, whenever you get real honest and open on this podcast and, you know, our, our audience isn't looking us at us in the eye, but you and I are looking at each other. And every time you mention a loss or grief, I remember like, it was just, you know, less than three years ago that you walked through an unexpected yeah. loss. You know, you lost your father in the midst of the pandemic and, gave birth to twins and there was like joy and loss all in one whack here. And I realized like that there's no like end date on that. It's not like, Oh, we're at this mark and therefore this is over. And now I start anew that the calendar turning doesn't change that. And so, so many of our listeners may be walking through whether it's grief because they've lost somebody like you have and Troy lost his brother. I mean, this is, these are mm-hmm. specific losses that just don't go away suddenly. Yeah. But also there are other kinds of things that can cause like emotional exhaustion, like weariness mm-hmm. emotionally that, you know, we might be praying and asking for an answer on something that the Lord hasn't seen fit to resolve right away. There might be a yeah. conflict that is still going on, even though it's now 2023 and there's an, new year ahead. We're still waiting for answers on things. And I think, I don't know, I guess I just want to say sometimes our lack of motivation is because we've been waiting a long time Mm -hmm. and sometimes we're emotionally just kind of tired and maybe there's not a resolution that's quick and easy. And the idea, the cultural expectation that everything resets and we get to start, there's a new beginning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just doesn't feel that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, coming out of the holidays, like maybe you just experienced a ton of relational tension in your family or the people that you got to hang out with. And just because January 1st rolls around doesn't mean that it's like, okay, now that's done. And we start again. Like, no, like all of that is going to carry through. And so, yeah, that's a really great point. Like sometimes it's just the weariness of waiting or of unresolved whatever that 
you, it's not going to just go away. And we can't read each other's hearts, but the truth is some of that is wrapped up in our flesh and our sinful tendency to like look in ourselves and think that we're lacking things and not trusting God. So that that's yeah. a sinful response. But sometimes it really is that we are just needing to remember the truth. And so wherever we're at, mm-hmm. whether it's a sinful response or a circumstantial response or just a, an emotional response, the, the answer is always the same. We have to turn to the Lord and we have to turn to the word of God and preach truth to ourselves. And so, you know, Eve, I... We started this off saying that we needed the truth. And I think what God does over and over again through the whole last, our first year, the whole last year of the podcast, our first year of the podcast, yeah. um, is that the truth is that everything we say and do will always come out of the overflow of our hearts. And so mm-hmm. I think what we're doing this time is we're inviting our listeners to join us on a journey where we need to preach truth to ourselves and we're going to mm-hmm. speak truth to one another and to our listeners and that we're going to remind each other at the start of this new year that yeah. wherever we are, whatever is going on, whatever carried over from the previous year, that the word of God stands true even now to remind us of what is lasting and what is good and what can give us maybe not pep in our steps just for the <laughs> sake of having peppiness, but right. what can give us the reminder that um, we're here on purpose for a purpose and mm-hmm. that we can have motivation because of Christ. And so that's what we're going to visit in the coming weeks. This special preach to yourself season is definitely not going to be exhaustive. Like we can't go through every single thing that we should preach to ourselves, but we are going to dive into a few really specific ones that we hope will help us shift our own perspectives and hopefully yours too. So the next episodes will focus um, on a specific truth to preach to your heart. And if you know others who kind of feel the same way at the beginning of the year, if this is really resonating with you and you're like, oh yes, like I feel all of these things, and you're like, and my friend does too. I know it. we've talked about it. We'd love for you to send them this episode so that they can kind of know what's coming as well and be ready to walk alongside us as we preach truth. And if you are a Grace Laced podcast listener, you know that typically at the end of each podcast episode, we always wrap up with a few questions. And these are the questions. What's the gospel truth? Why does it matter? And what's one small thing we can do to apply the truth to our lives? And so in this preach to yourself season, it's really pretty clear. The gospel truth is that we'll find everything we need to fight for truth in God's word. And it Mm -hmm. matters because he didn't leave us without answers or with, without hope. And the one small thing we can do and the one small step we're going to be taking together is to meditate on the truth of that episode. Each week, we're going to take that truth and we're going to meditate on it. And that literally will be the small step we take. Yes, We're really so grateful that we get to learn and rehearse the truth alongside you week by week. So thanks so much for joining us. We can't wait for this journey and preaching truth to ourselves when we're lacking motivation together. Believe it or not, this season is the beginning of year two of the Grace Lace podcast. We have been so encouraged by your support over the course of the last year and could not be more grateful every time you leave a review or share an episode with a friend. We count it as a privilege to serve you with this content. Thanks for listening, friends. Well, friends, there's one resource we couldn't not tell you about after talking about preaching truth to ourselves. Did you know that Grace Lace Shop actually carries a Preach to Yourself deck featuring 52 cards to help you preach truth to yourself about God's care from the Psalms? This deck is great for tucking into a card to encourage a friend or putting in your own wallet to help you memorize scripture on the go. Find it in the shop and learn more at gracelace.com.